I want to start the program off today talking about something called connective tissue. Yesterday there was an article that was published in the journal Neuron that implicated broken and leaky blood vessels in the head, in the brain, with the development of Alzheimer's disease. According to researchers, the brain's protective barrier, which keeps blood from leaking into the brain and the contents of blood from leaking into the brain as we get older, this, uh, this barrier starts to break down and contents of the circulatory system leak into the sensitive areas of the brain, particularly those that are involved in learning and in memory. And according to researchers anyway, in this article in the journal Neuron, this is associated with the development of Alzheimer's disease. And you know what? This is good news. If it's true, and it probably is, because it means that by strengthening the architecture of the circulatory system, the blood vessels, which you can think of as miniature hoses, we can perhaps stave off entirely or even maybe slow down the progression, the development of all brain health issues, including Alzheimer's disease, which affects 5 million Americans over the age of 65. So what is it that gives these blood vessels their strength? And what is it that breaks down in the blood vessels to cause them to become leaky, leak their contents into the brain? It's a substance called connective tissue, which, as the name implies, connects different parts of the body together. For example, the bones are partially made up of connective tissue in addition to minerals. The digestive system depends on connective tissue to link up its components. And it's connective tissue that keeps your skin nice and tight and smooth. Wrinkles can be considered the manifestation of connective tissue breakdown. In fact, pretty much all degenerative diseases have a significant connective tissue breakdown component. And pretty much all the obvious and visible signs of aging, including the shrinking and shriveling that are characteristic of an elderly body. For the most part, that's a connective tissue problem. Connective tissue, as I say, connects muscles and various parts of the body to each other. It's how organs are suspended inside the body. They basically hang on connective tissue. When connective tissue breaks down, sometimes your organs will drop. That's called a prolapse. It can happen to the bladder, it can happen to the uterus, really any structure that's suspended inside the body on connective tissue can prolapse. Sometimes connective tissue becomes weakened and structures will poke through. That's called a hernia. And again, it's a connective tissue problem. Connective tissue is usually found with muscle tissue and between the two, between connective tissue and muscle tissue, you have about 80 to 90% of the human body. The rest is made up of nerve tissue and a specialized material called epithelial tissue, but the vast majority of the body, 80 to 90 percent of it, is made up of muscle and connective tissue. Muscle and connective tissue is what we call meat. In animals, it's the food known as meat, whether it's roast beef or steak or burger or pork loin or whatever. What we're eating is meat and connective tissue. While most of us like um, love our steaks nice and juicy and hamburgers nice and juicy, it's really the connective tissue that accounts for the flavor and the juiciness of a good piece of meat. The connective tissue is the stuff that makes your steak nice and flavorful. Processed meats usually have extra connective tissue thrown in, thrown into the recipe, thrown into the mix to create this juicy effect. Pro uh, chicken nuggets will almost always have a little bit of connective tissue thrown into their formula. It's connective tissue that makes all meats nice and juicy when the connective tissue melts. That's what makes your steak nice and flavorful. If it's not overcooked, steak can be pretty darn healthy and healing and building and anti-aging because of this connective tissue, which is made up of amino acids, especially the amino acids that form collagen. Collagen is actually the, the most important component of connective tissue. Collagen is made up of three little amino acids, and collagen is a very, very important part. Collagen in the diet, I should say, can be a very, very important part of keeping your body healthy. One of the most troubling and potentially, at least uh, potentially, unattractive manifestations of the breakdown of connective tissue and muscle tissue is something called cellulite. The reason most cellulite creams and wraps and gels are really kind of silly is it's a connective tissue problem. And the connective tissue, uh, the breakdown in connective tissue that occurs when you have cellulite is deep. It's not accessible to creams and wraps. You can't really use a cream or a wrap to take care of your connective tissue, but you can use nutritional strategies. In fact, the same nutritional strategies that you use for building your joints, for building, uh, uh, keeping your skin from wrinkling, can also be important for taking care of cellulite. Cellulite is purely and simply a connective tissue breakdown problem. Underneath the skin, the layer of connective tissue is what gives your skin its firm and resilient nature. 
And once that connective tissue breaks down, the fat that's located underneath the connective tissue starts to poke through. And that's what gives you gives cellulite that kind of orange peel appearance. So what do you do if you have a connective tissue problem, whether it's in the blood vessels or whether it's in the skin or whether it's a connective tissue problem that's causing cellulite? Even osteoporosis can be thought of at least partially as a connective tissue problem. What do you do? Well, there's lots you could do. First of all, you want to eat connective tissue. Eating connective tissue is eating meat, eating collagen eating your bone soup or drinking your bone soup, where you take your chicken bones and, and, and uh, chicken carcass after you eat your chicken or turkey after you peeled off all the meat for Thanksgiving dinner, you put it in some water and you boil it down, you make some soup. All that connective tissue that's located in the cartilage of your chicken bones and your turkey bones will dissolve into the liquid, into the soup, and you can actually drink connective tissue, at least the connective tissue building blocks. It's a great way to help build connective tissue. Of course, nutritional supplementation is also important. The glucogel capsule will help you build connective tissue. Vitamin C is very important. Get yourself on the Healthy Start Pack. In fact, all the longevity supplements, or most of the longevity supplements anyway, can be leveraged in one way or another to help build the body and help ultimately to build connective tissue. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. 831-685-1080 is our priority line number. 888-379-2552. 888 Toll free. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program on ZBS Radio Network. For you. I'll be sitting in for the next uh, 45 minutes or so, as I always am, with my good friend and colleague, Doug Winfrey. What's up, Douglas? Well, I thought we'd talk a bit about uh, sitting today, as okay. uh, we, most of us spend a lot of time sitting. I calculated it up a few months ago, and I realized that I was sitting anywhere, you know, between driving to and from work and uh, sitting at work, and then yeah. sitting at night, you know, when I'm sitting around watching TV or whatever. And Most of the time, probably. Yeah, so I realized I was sitting like 12 to 14 hours a day, and... Oh, um, so I had a CNN article here that's headline, Sitting Will Kill You Even If You Exercise. They said one of your favorite activities may actually be killing you. Modern world is constructed to keep you sitting down. We drive and we sit. We work at the office and we sit. We watch TV and we sit. A new study in the Annals of Internal Medicine found that uh, the sedentary behavior increases our chances of getting disease condition that will kill us prematurely even if we exercise Researchers uh, from Toronto came to this conclusion after analyzing 47 studies of sedentary behavior and adjusted their data to incorporate the amount someone exercises and found that the sitting we typically do in a day still outweighs the benefit we get from exercise. They say if uh, the more you exercise, the lower the impact of the sedentary behavior. They say sedentary behavior can lead to the death from cardiovascular issues and cancer, as well as some chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes. Say physical act inactivity is identified as the fourth leading risk factor for death, according to the World Health Organization. They say prolonged sitting from 8 to 12 hours or more a day increases your risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 90%. So what can you do to reduce the time you spend engaged in this activity that's not good for you? The authors make some simple suggestions. They say one is be aware of how much you're sitting and make a goal of reducing the number a little bit each week. At work, uh, try a standing desk, desk, and I actually did that, uh, the, the station that I use for surfing the internet uh, about probably about four or five, six months ago, I made that into a standing position because I spend at least two to three hours a day online. And they say stand or walk around a minute or uh, a minute or three once every half hour or so. They say if you watch TV at night, don't zoom through the commercials with on your DVR. Instead, get up and walk around or at least stand during the commercial break. So uh, I've started trying to incorporate a lot of this stuff into my lifestyle because, I mean, you're, you're spending, you know, when I realized I was spending 14 hours a day uh, sitting, I'm just like going, Geez, or, you know, I'm not overweight or anything, but I'm not. I don't get a whole lot of exercise, so that could be problematic in my life. And so, uh, and now, do you sit a lot? I am sitting most of the time. That's why I make sure I work out pretty much. Well, apparently, if you're sitting 10, 12 hours a day, even if you do work out, that it's not really not, not you know it's not outweighing the the negative benefit or negative aspects of sitting all the time. Well, you know what. I'm going to have to take that under consideration. That kind of sucks because you, they, know, you what? know they actually they're pretty expensive, but they actually make these um, sitting, uh, a standing desk stations that even have a uh, treadmill associated with it. So not only are you just not just standing there, you know you could be walking at a slow pace while you're surfing the internet or or typing on your computer or whatever. 
The ones right. I saw online were about four grand, but you know when you compare that to how much you spend on health care, to drop four, in the bucket. Four grand. What do they give you for four grand? That's a stand that holds your computer or your laptop, and you know has like a drink holder, and then it's got a treadmill associated with it, so you could you could walk at a fast pace or walk at a slow pace as you're standing there surfing the net or typing on your computer. Wow, it's, and what's it made out of? Uh, aluminum and you know metal and four grand. Oh my god! No, the I'm one I saw business. online was about four grand. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I personally speaking, I got to make sure after you know I read that article this morning, I got to make sure that I'm walking around a lot more when I'm doing my work because I do sit a lot. And I tell you what, if I you said twelve to eighteen hours of sitting, how long are you up? Uh, eight to twelve hours. Or eight to twelve hours. How long are you up? You know, you're only up for what, 16, 17 hours. Yeah. That's like most of the day we spent sitting down on our on our butt skis. Yeah. And exercise doesn't even help. Yeah, that's the bad part about it. Holy cow. You know, there's there's all the good news about all that Douglas is what it says is that there's so many different ways that we can approach our health. There's so many different things on a positive sense that we can do to stay healthy. Things like just moving your body around and of course things like getting on a good nutritional supplement program. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, listening, uh, along with Douglas Winfrey, and you're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. We're going to take a break and come back. 831-685-1080 is our priority line number, 888 toll free. We'll be back right after this. Got a couple more things to talk about, Douglas. Uh, do you hear about the new psoriasis medication that just came out? Or just I got heard something about say? that. Yeah, I saw an ad on TV, I think. I am telling you, I don't know what the heck people are thinking. Is it pretty good we, stuff? No, it's not pretty good stuff. <laughs> it's toxic stuff. Psoriasis is, the long and the short of it, an immune system condition. And when you have an immune system condition, you got a defensive condition. And when you have a defensive condition, you got to figure out what the offending agent is. And it's always going to be something in your food and uh, usually something associated with a nutritional deficiency, especially around fats and fatty vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin D. Make sure you're using your healthy start pack, your digestive enzymes, and eliminating food allergies. And that's what we were talking about before we went to break, Doug. We should always want to look for the simplest and easiest solution. In philosophy, there's this concept called Occam's razor. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. Occam's razor. And Occam's razor, as you know, says that you always want to find the simplest solution to a problem. And the simplest solution to a health issue is not a prescription drug. In fact, that's not even a solution at all. The simplest solution is to figure out what is getting into the sacred space of the body, or uh, specifically the sacred space of the blood, and then eliminate it, and at the same time, strengthen the body's ability to handle whatever is getting into the system, and that always involves nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Occam's razor, philosophy, the idea that the simplest solution is always the best solution, and in the case of health, that does not involve drugs. You know, Dr. Wallach links uh, psoriasis to the gluten intolerance. Very that's, likely. That's one, of, that's one of the hallmark signs of people that have a gluten intolerance is that they have uh, psoriasis or eczema, and as soon as they stop eating wheat, then it suddenly, miraculously, clears up without a prescription drug. Isn't that interesting? Why do yeah. we need prescription drugs? And you know how the prescription drugs work, by the way? Oh, by the way? They, they usually suppress turn, the immune... Yeah, they, they turn things off. They turn the immune system off. Who thinks that's a good idea to suppress the immune system? It's not a good idea to suppress uh, people the that have a lot of money in the stock in, in the stocks of uh, pharmaceutical companies. I know, but that's just so that's anti-humanity. That's not right. It's not right to do to our fellow human beings. I'm telling you. Anyway, now, so what's you, going? What are you, you a coffee for? drinker? No, I hate the stuff. Oh my goodness! So you're probably like gonna, you're going like to get tea. melanoma then. No, why? Because coffee. Is I see an in story here. Headline: Daily coffee may protect against melanoma, according to a study. Say daily cups of coffee may do more than just provide energy; may prevent, uh, be protective against the common, most common type of melanoma, according to the National Cancer Institute. They say data from 447,000 non-Hispanic white subjects from the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study. Researchers found that uh, a 20% lower risk for malignant melanoma for those who consumed four to four or more cups of coffee per day. And that they started uh, with uh, questionnaires about uh, baseline diet beginning back in 95, 96, and did a median follow-up about 10 years later. And uh, after they adjusted for ambient residual ultraviolet radiation exposure, body mass index, age, sex, physical activity, alcohol intake, and smoking history, uh, they say that uh, you, they can, you can reduce your risk by 20% if you're drinking four cups or more a day. That's pretty impressive. I so I'm not going to get it. I drink that much. <laughs> You're not going to get melanoma because you drink coffee. Where did you read this article? CNN. 
You know, coffee is very interesting stuff. We get, uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in coffee, especially if you do it correctly. And you know what else, Douglas? Caffeine gets a bad rap, too. Oh, by the way, in their study, uh, the non-caffeinated coffee, they didn't see the same result. I was going to say, you know, caffeine gets a bad rap. It's not necessarily a poison. It is a medication, or it is a drug, I should I should say. But it's not necessarily something that you want to avoid like the plague, although certainly taking do, using too much caffeine can be a problem. Caffeine is considered to be a nootropic agent. That means a learning aid. How do you like that? All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with your phone calls. 831-685-1080, 888-379-2552. Toll free. We'll be back after this. And it's time to hit our phones. What do you say we take our first phone call of the day, Douglas? All right. Let's head to New Jersey. And Stephanie, you're on with Pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Uh, yes, hey. Hi, Ben. Hey there. Hi. Um, I, I'm actually calling for a family friend of ours who's dealing with kidney failure, and we mentioned the um, Longevity program to him, and he's really interested in it. Okay. Um, he's also currently on dialysis. Okay. But he wants to know exactly what supplements he should be taking. Okay. That's a great question. Kidney problems, kidney disease, dialysis, it's really almost an epidemic. The kidney filters the blood. Okay, just think of a spaghetti strainer, and when the blood gets dirty, especially with sugar, but it could be lots of things, toxins, immune, uh, immune kinds of compounds, lots of things. Uh, when, uh, when the uh, blood gets dirty, toxic, uh, it's got stuff floating around in it and little complexes, it'll clog up the kidneys, eventually it can cause kidney damage, and this is the number one reason why people have messed up kidneys. So what do you do? Well, you gotta clean the blood. How do you clean the blood? Well, the most important way to clean the blood is to eliminate the entrance of toxins which come in through the digestive system. So number one, you want to treat kidney disease as a sign that something is getting in, leaky gut. Something is getting in through the gut, leaking into the blood. And number two, it's usually associated with a, a reaction between sugar and protein. It's called glycation. And so you want to consider sugar to be a problem as well. Dirty blood from the digestive system and dirty blood from too much sugar. So what do you do? Well, you work on the digestive system, eliminate problem foods, use the bioluminightly essence, use the fucoidin Z, and get on the healthy start pack to help rebuild the digestive tract. You can also throw in some glucogel caps, which can be supportive in that way also. And then when you're using your digestive enzymes, it's a good idea to do a little apple cider vinegar with that to help activate the enzymes. From the uh, perspective of sugar, use the uh, reduce your intake of sugar. Of course, that's always the first thing to do. And then use nutrients that help support the body's ability to process sugar. The Sweeties is great. The Fucoidin Z can help you a little bit that way too. Same with the Ultimate Selenium. Selenium can also help uh, in terms of general detoxification. And then the uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine is loaded with sugar metabolizing nutrients, specifically the B complex and uh, uh, thiamine, that is thiamine and niacin specifically, and mineral magnesium, which you'll also find in the Beyond Osteo FX. If you want to throw in a couple other things, you might want to consider using the ultimate essential fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids can have a beneficial effect on uh, sugar metabolism and more protein, but just be kind of careful with your protein because your kidneys are going to be processing that, uh, but more protein to help wean yourself off of sugar. So consider it to be a toxicity issue, primarily digestive and food-based, and then also sugar. That's how you deal with kidney problems. And by the way, the kidneys can recover and the kidneys are amazingly, amazingly resilient. So just because you don't have kidney issues, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not causing kidney damage by your food choices and, uh, and uh, toxicity issues. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you out. Who's next on the line, Doug? All right. Let's head to Indiana and Donna. You're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey, Donna. Um, I have uh, some questions regarding my dad. Um, he has rotator, rotator cuff damage in both shoulders. A rotator yeah, he, cuff, I'm sorry, ma'am, a rotator cuff damage, you say? Yes. Was he an athlete or just kind of wear and tear? Or no, just... he's, uh, he's 92. Oh. And um, one of them is from uh, pulling a handle on uh, shift gear on lawnmower. All right. Well, he's got, a lot, he's got a lot bigger problems than rotator cuff, cuff damage, my dear. That's probably the least of his concerns. Uh, but if you want to start rebuilding the body... A rotator cuff or otherwise, you got to do just the same kind of things that you do if you're a bodybuilder, you're an athlete, or you're anybody who wants to build muscle and wants to build connective tissue. Rotator cuff being kind of a combination of the two. Hang tight and I'll explain when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program on the ZBS radio network. 
Okay, welcome back to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. I'm Pharmacist Ben, along with Doug Winfrey, 831 685 1080 is our priority line number, 888 379 2552. Toll free. Who's next on the line, Doug? Uh, we're still talking to Donna. Oh, we got Donna. Donna, my dear, rotator cuff. Hi. Okay, so here's the scoop. We got to get you. We got to get your. Uh, you said this was your boyfriend. No, it's my dad. He's you 92. Said your dad. Okay. He is so taking physical therapy. Well, hang tight. They're me... telling him they can't help him much more. Well, they. You know, that's because from a medical perspective, they can't. But what we have right. to do is we want to build him up, and this is okay. really important. You know. One of the neatest things we could do if we're if we're dealing with a degenerative crisis, and and uh, your dad is you know he's 92 years old, so a lot of this is kind of wear and tear. But if we're dealing with any degenerative crisis, we want to start working with ourselves like we were bodybuilders, like reading bodybuilding magazines. Anything a bodybuilder is interested in doing is going to be important for anybody really who's interested in getting strong, getting healthy, recovering from a degenerative disease crisis, or building the rotator cuff. Namely, going what I call going anabolic, going into a building mode. And there's lots of ways to do that, all right? And, it, and it's not instant, by the way, Don. I don't mean to mislead you into saying you just take this pill or that pill. Mm-hmm. It's something that you got to do over the course of time. Number one, most important, is that if anything is getting into his body that is causing inflammation or an inflammatory response, and that means uh, foods that he's having a problem with, and it also means sugar, you got to minimize, or ideally, zero tolerance for any of those kinds of things. Because as long as there's an inflammatory process going on, it's going to be very tough to build. The second thing you want to do, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The, se- the second thing we need to do is we need to start taking in nutrients that are important for building, chief among which is protein. Protein is the prime building substance. Now, if he has a digestive problem, it's going to be a little harder for him to absorb his protein. So make sure he's grinding his protein up, using soups or smoothies, making sure the protein is somehow liquefied so it's easier to absorb. And then making sure he's using his ultimate enzymes with his protein. Get him on the Slender FX. Have him do maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon once, uh, once every couple hours, every three hours. And then have him do one, one or two digestive enzymes with that. And maybe a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Essential well, fatty acids. I have a question. When he well, started me... on longevity, um, he was taking 12 enzymes before a meal. Because yeah. he would have acid reflux. He's down to five now. So he's doing better and maybe... Um, and in a week or two, I can drop him down to four. But um, so he does have digestion issues, and he's had them for a long time. But he is getting better. Well, that's that's an, that's positive. But you know, there's long-term uh, implications for digestive issues. It probably has something to do with the breakdown of the body. So in any case, we got to correct those. Eliminating problem foods is always the first step, and then using all the digestive support that we talked about. Get them on the Biolumin Nightly Essence and the Fucoidin Z as well. Those are very important for digestive health. And then, as I say, the Slender FX, uh, okay. maybe a tablespoon or so every few hours. Kind of small amounts of protein. If you do bone soup, that's a great idea too. The Healthy Star Pack is a must-have. I would be, uh, I'd be doing uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but sipping on it all day long, and probably about nine of the essential fatty acid capsules, the EFA capsules, and then a capful or so of the uh, Beyond Osteo FX, one or two capsules a day of the Beyond Osteo FX. If you want to throw in a couple other things just for all-around support, use the Ultimate Daily. That is a uh, multiple vitamin that will get him all of the bare bone basics of what he needs. And uh, that ought to get you going. The most important thing, though, is the digestive system. And it's always the most important thing. Why? Because as long as there's breakdowns in the digestive system, you're not going to absorb the nutrients and toxins are going to get into the body. And thanks so much for your call, Don. Appreciate it. And uh, God I bless you. I have one more question about him. Oh, sure. Okay. Has, uh, I think it's a skin fungus. It's um, it's on his back, on his neck. His arms, it creeps around. It's all related, my dear. All, all related. Sugar problem. Sugar and digestion and toxins getting into the system and probably what's called dysbiosis, which is messed up gut bacteria. And that's where the, the fucoidin Z is going to come in. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, the, uh, the Biolumin Nightly Essence is going to come in. It's going to give him those probiotics. It sounds like his bacteria are off, and it all sounds like it's following digestive issues, especially considering what you just said about his long-term digestive problems. Thanks so much for your call. Really, I hope that helps, and, uh, and good luck with your dad. God bless you. Okay, who's next, Doug? Let's head to Alberta, Canada, and Gary, you're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey, what's up? Alberta. Hi. I have a question uh, about a person, a family friend, who's got, who was an eight-year-old girl. She, uh, she was told she has polyarthritis ellidosa. Oh, okay. 
So fancy schmancy way of saying he's got, she's got an inflammatory disease and her joints are being affected. Same, same drill. When you have inflammation in the body, you've got a defensive response. Okay, you with me so far? Yes. Well, first thing to focus on when you have a defensive response is an offending agent. And the most likely uh, suspect when you have an offending agent is a leaky gut. So we've got to patch up the gut first and foremost. How do you patch up the gut? Well, same thing we just talked about. You use the Z-radical, that's, or the Fucoidin-Z. I like the Fucoidin-Z better. Uh, it's a little more bang for your buck. And the Biolumin Nightly Essence and digestive enzymes with all your meals. Simultaneous with that, you're going to want to look for problem foods and then eliminate those foods. Uh, when it comes to joint health, there's a couple other things you might want to consider, and that is fats and fatty vitamins. That's your ultimate EFAs. Probably the Healthy Star Pack would be a wise choice for you. Uh, ultimate EFAs, I would be doing a little bit extra, maybe 12 or so a day. And then uh, make sure you're using some of the glucogel caps too. And by the way, when you're using the glucogel caps, uh, for all joint issues, the glucogel caps can be helpful. When you're using your glucogel caps, use your Beyond Tangy tang Tangerine with the glucogel caps. Why? Because vitamin C is required for collagen production, and vitamin C is also important for helping turn on the glucosamine in the glucogel caps. So whenever you use the glucogel caps, use them with a little bit of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. So you've got essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, you've got your healthy star pack in general, your Fucoidin Z, and uh, digestive enzymes also, and the Biolumin Nightly Essence, last but most certainly not least. It may be helpful for you if you use your ultimate enzymes, uh, or if you have, uh, have the patient use the ultimate enzymes with or on an empty stomach in addition to with meals. On an empty stomach, they'll help you with inflammatory problems. With meals, they'll help you absorb and digest your essential nutrients. Uh, and also focus on the fats. Really important to focus on the fats when you have arthritis. And by fats, I mean essential fatty acids, digestive enzymes to help you absorb your fats, and then vitamin A and also vitamin D, which you can get by getting yourself out in the sun. Yes, indeed. The sun can be very helpful for folks who are dealing with joint problems and arthritis via this vitamin D connection. Thanks so much for your call from Alberta, Canada. Hope we helped you out. And can we get one more call in, Doug? Yeah, let's head to San Mateo, California. And Amir, you're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey, Amir. What's up, Amir? Uh, hello, can you hear me? I hear you good. I hear you well, yes, Amir. What's yes, up? Yes, I do. Okay, this is regarding uh, my friend. Uh, she's saying she's 48 uh, and she's 140 pounds. She said, what's the best thing to do to prevent uh, breast cancer? Oh, uh, breast cancer to prevent it? You mean she doesn't have an issue, she just wants to prevent it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Number one, you want to eliminate any uh, problems with the digestive system, food, or um, uh, toxins getting in through the leaky gut. That means eliminating problem foods. Number two, you want to focus on fat absorption. The breasts are fatty tissue, and breast cancer always involves something to do with the fat system of the body. That means all your fatty vitamins and nutrients, especially the ultimate EFAs, make sure she's doing about 9 or 12 a day, and make sure if she has a digestive problem and she's not absorbing them or she feels gassy or bloaty, sometimes people will complain that they don't feel comfortable after they use their essential fatty acids. If that's the case, make sure she takes it with a little bit of food and maybe the ultimate enzymes, which on their own can be helpful for helping prevent, uh, helping protect against cancers because of their ability to improve your absorption of nutrients. So using the ultimate enzymes can be important. The bioluminitely essence is also helpful for uh, fat metabolism and fat absorption and maybe even for prevention of cancer. Certainly it's going to be helpful in an all-around sense for just general health in the body and uh, because most of us have problems with our gut bacteria, using the Biolumin Nightly Essence, in my opinion, is just as important as using the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, even though they're not part of the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrient Program. Uh, three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night might be helpful. Fucoidin Z is powerfully anti-cancer. There's lots of literature on Fucoidin boosting the immune system and helping fight cancer. So using three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night of the Fucoidin Z might be in her interest. She might want to throw in some of the women's FX and also perhaps the ultimate daily as well. Thank you so much for your call. Amir in San Mateo, California. And uh, that's all we got time for now. We'll come back with more good health information right after this break. Our number is 831-685-1080 or 888-379-2552, toll free. I'm pharmacist Ben along with Doug Winfrey sitting in for Dr. Wallach today. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program on the ZBS radio network. Okay, we are back on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 831-685-1080 is our priority line number, 888-379-2552. Toll free, got a couple more minutes to speak to you. 
Who's next on the line, Doug? All right, let's head to Montana. And Trina, you're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey, yeah. Trina. Oh, hey. hi. Hey. Um, hey. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? Um, I wanted to talk about my sister. She's had fibromyalgia for uh, quite a few years now, and she was reading the reviews on the products and wants me to find out what she needs to get. Okay. Give me some specifics. How old is she? Uh, she is She's 42 as of today. Okay. And um, she's 125 pounds or so. How tall? Um, she's taller than I am, 5'4". Okay. Right. Five, five. <laughs> not, not too bad, and she's in her 40s. Just give me a couple, two or three, two or three things that she'd like help with. Um, well, basically, she's got the fibromyalgia issue. Um, Is that the only thing? Yeah. yeah um, okay. Let's, let's talk yeah, fibromyalgia. Yeah. That, well, that's a great subject, actually, because a lot of folks have fibromyalgia, and there's a lot of misunderstandings about it. First of all, fibromyalgia is not a disease, and it's not a sickness, and it's not a diagnosis. It's just a description of what's happening in the body. You've got muscle pain. Fibromyalgia means fiber muscle pain, muscle fiber pain. Okay, so that's just like saying I have a headache. It's a description of what's happening in the body. So then the question becomes, what causes that pain? Well, pain is always a result of inflammation. What causes inflammation? Inflammation is a defensive response, and that means something is getting into the blood that shouldn't get into the blood. Usually it means food and what we said, as we've been, as we've been terming, dis biosis. That means messed up gut bacteria. Dis means messed up, dysfunctional. Biosis means bacteria. So you want to focus on two things for fibromyalgia. Okay, Number one, you want to focus on digestive health. And number two, you want to focus on probiotics. Now there's also a uh, com uh, estrogen component, a female hormone component. And as you may know or may not know, uh, most of the people who have fibromyalgia are women. It's rare that men have fibromyalgia and that's because of this link to estrogen. Estrogen is a female hormone and the most important problem with estrogen or the most important reason why estrogen becomes a problem is because of the digestive system. So focusing on digestive health is first and foremost. I would be using the BioLumin Nightly Essence right away. Sometimes that alone can make a big difference. Eliminating problem foods. Number two, patching up the gut to prevent toxins from leaking through into the blood is also important. Uh, the, uh, the Fucoidin Z is your main source of gut patching up nutrition. If I can use that term, you might also want to use the glucogel caps. Bone soup can also be helpful. See if she can link her fibromyalgia symptoms to specific foods that she's eating, and then eliminating those foods can be a good idea. And then last but not least, treating the estrogen secondarily. Uh, not You can't directly treat the estrogen, but treating it secondarily or protecting the body from the toxic forms of estrogen can be helpful for you. A couple strategies in this regard. Uh, the ultimate essential fatty acids, super important for all estrogenic issues, whether it's endometriosis or PMS or fibromyalgia. I'd be using 9 or 12 of those a day with meals. And then you may want to look into the woman's FX, which is used to support female hormones and the female, uh, female reproductive system. And as I say, fibromyalgia should be thought of as a female hormone issue primarily. If you want to uh, do one more thing, you may want to look for some progesterone cream, real progesterone cream. You may have to have a, co a compounding pharmacy make that for you. Progesterone cream has a nice relaxing effect on the body, and it can help stabilize that female reproductive hormone system, especially around estrogen. Now, uh, later on, you're going to want to start to protect the liver because there's usually some liver involvement when it comes to fibromyalgia. But first and foremost, use foods, the Biolumin Nightly Essence and probiotics. And then also, if you want to do one more thing, maybe uh, use the Women's FX and some progesterone cream. Thanks so much for call. Appreciate it. And let's see if we can get one more call in, Doug. Yeah, we're only about 20 seconds away here. Oh, how does that happen? Time goes by so fast on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. There's so much to talk about. So much to talk about when it comes to health and nutrition and prescription drugs. But the bottom line is, friends, it's not difficult to get healthy. We've been sold a bill of goods that says we got to be diagnosed and we got to be poked and we got to be prodded and we need drugs and devices and doctors. And I'm here to tell you, for the most part, when it comes to chronic degenerative disease, we don't need the medical model. We need good nutrition, a good nutritional supplement program, like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, breathing and relaxing and taking it easy and let the body do its work. Thanks so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. For Doug Winfrey and all the folks at the ZBS Radio Network and Doc Wallach, have yourselves a spectacular, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.